Today I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as an iPhone 15 Pro Max expert. Let's get started. First off, let's check out the packaging that the iPhone comes in. It's a very minimalistic packaging on the back. You've got a pull tab where you can go ahead and open it up. And on the side, it says iPhone and iPhone. So let's go ahead and open this model up and set it up for the first time. So we'll just go ahead and pull off the strip here at the top and pull off the strip at the bottom. And just like that, we'll be able to open up our iPhone for the very first time. It's got a pull tab in. You can see we've got this lovely color here, the titanium side edges and on the front, we've got a little sticker and it shows us the controls on the sticker. You can see right here, you've got the mute button. It's no longer a switch. You've got the volume up and volume down button, up and down. And then on the side, you've got the power button right here. So you've got the power button right there. You can press that. And if we can get some light there, you can see the buttons on the left side. We've got the mute button, also now known as the action button. We'll dive into that later. You've got the volume up, the volume down, so really cool here. And then at the very bottom, you've got the USB-C port for charging. And it's really helpful that they've put this guide on the sticker here. So you can see where all of your buttons are and what you need to press in order to act activate a certain command here. So I'm going to go ahead and peel the sticker off. And just like that, it comes off and we're presented with our screen where we've got our face ID at the top and it looks beautiful. It's the first time here that we see the iPhone screen. I'm going to put this aside here and see what else is in the box. So inside we've got designed by Apple in California. We can pull this out and we've got an uh, information tray to set up our eSIM and then some iPhone information and a single Apple sticker that we have there. I'll go ahead and put these back in the box and Next up in the box, we've got a braided USB-C cable. This is very nice material. We'll go ahead and open it up and you can check it out here and see what it looks like. We'll go ahead and rip this off. And this is a USB-C cable. It sticks into the bottom of your phone. And of course, you can buy the additional USB-C um, connector to plug it up and charge your iPhone. So you've got USB-C, a brand new port on the iPhone. This is what it looks like. And it plugs into the bottom of your iPhone just like that. So that's what's in the box for the iPhone. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and we'll be right back. All right, now we're back and we've got the iPhone in hand. I'm going to go ahead and hold down this power button right here and activate the power and turn on the phone for the first time. And we'll go through the setup process. So I'm holding it down just like that. And the Apple logo appears. And now we're going to boot up the iPhone for the very first time. And we can take a look at the back here. We've got our camera lenses. We've got the microphone and the uh, light, the flashlight and the uh, flash there. So beautiful design here. We've got it booting up for the first time and it presents a hello screen. So in order to set up your iPhone, you'll go ahead and swipe up from the very bottom right here. You can see there is a line, a bar at the very bottom. You'll swipe up and it's going to ask you what language do you want to set your iPhone up? with. You can scroll down, see all the various different languages they have, and you can select whichever language you want to use your phone with. So I'll go ahead and select English. And next up is our country or region. So we've got United States at the top. That's my country. We'll go ahead and tap that, but you can scroll down, select the country that you're in or the region that you're in to set up your phone. Next up is appearance, and it says choose the size of text and icons on iPhone. So by default, you can see what it looks like. The text is just the default size. We can scroll over this little dot here to medium, and you can see that they get a little bit bigger. We can scroll it back over to the left. You see they're tiny. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this as I zoom over to medium. They get a lot bigger. And then the last option they have here is large. If we move over to large, you can see they get even bigger. So if you'd like to have, um, you know, a a lot of icons and text really large on your screen you can scroll this dot right over to the large section or if you want it medium you can move it over to medium or you can leave it as default i'm going to go ahead and leave this one as default and hit the continue button to proceed and save the appearance of your iphone so we'll go ahead and hit continue just like that and next up is quick start if you have an iphone that you have already set up or an ipad that you've already set up you can bring it into play you just set it right next to your iPhone right here that you're setting up. We can demo this really quick. If I bring over um, an iPhone here, you can see that it's detected another iPhone next to it. So this is the quick start process. You can use 
your iPhone to automatically transfer your data from your old iPhone to your new iPhone just by bringing your old iPhone in proximity. So all you have to do is just bring your old iPhone next to your brand new iPhone under the quick start process and hit the continue button and it will start seamlessly transferring your old data from your old iPhone over to your new iPhone. If you do not have an older iPhone and this is your first iPhone that you're setting up, you can also do this with an iPad if you have an iPad or if you don't have an iPad or an iPhone nearby that, that you can activate quick start with, you just press this, bottom, this button at the very bottom here where it says set up with another device. So you'll go ahead and press this blue text and now it's going to ask you to choose a Wi-Fi network. So we can scroll here, you can scroll through all your Wi-Fi networks. I'm going to go ahead and tap on my Wi-Fi network and then type in the passcode off camera, but you will need your iPhone, your Wi-Fi password in order to set up all of your connections here. So I'm going to join the Wi-Fi network and then it's going to process, it's going to make sure my password is correct. And here it's trying to activate the phone. So the Wi-Fi was successfully um, inputted and now it says it may take a few minutes for the iPhone to be activated. So we'll go through this process really quick and just like this, it's saying there's an important software update. So we can update iPhone software now if we want to transfer data from another phone or you can update later if you plan to download an iPhone or an iCloud backup. So I highly recommend updating now for you to be able to have the latest software on your iPhone. And then if you're transferring from another phone or have any other uh, data that's being transferred from iCloud, it'll be easier to be um, inputted on this brand new phone. For now, I'm going to set up later because I'm going to set this iPhone up as a brand new iPhone. And we can go over the software update process. I'll show you how to update it after we hit the later button. So I'm going to go ahead and hit update later. And now it's asking about data and privacy. So you can learn how Apple uses your data. And when you see this icon in any of the Apple apps, it lets you know that the privacy policy is being in place and that the app may be collecting your data in some way. So you can read this over. You can press the learn more information to learn more about your data. And then you can hit continue to proceed to the next screen here. So now it's asking for us to set up our iPhone. So we can set this iPhone up for ourselves. We can set it up for a child account, or um, you can you know, set this up for someone else. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up for myself, but if you're gonna set it up for a child, you just press the, bot the button at the very bottom, this link right here where it says set up for a child in my family. But if you're setting it up for yourself, you'll just press set up for myself right here at the very top in the big blue button. So we'll go ahead and press that. And next up is Face ID. So iPhone can recognize the unique three-dimensional features of your face. You can set this up later if you want to, or you can go ahead and set it up now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue and we'll set up Face ID in this video right now. So Face ID allows you to unlock your iPhone and it's really neat uh, because all you have to do is just look at your phone and it will analyze your facial features and then if it's a match, it will unlock the phone. So in order to set up Face ID, you're gonna have to move your head in a circle around the camera and I'll demo that for you right now. I'm gonna angle the camera on the camera's right here at the very top. I'm gonna angle this towards me and I'm gonna hit get started. And now you can see me. So I'm gonna position within the frame here and now I'm gonna slowly move my head in a circle. I'm gonna look up and around and you can see it creates a little nice animation there and I've scanned successfully. So that's how you enroll in Face ID. Next up is Face ID with the mask. So you can set up a mask or you can choose not to set up a mask. The, if you choose to use Face ID with a mask, you'll need to do additional scanning. So I'll demo that for you right now. If you just press this button right here that says use face ID with a mask, it'll ask you to scan your face one more time. If you select don't use face ID with a mask, then you no longer will have to set up any additional face scannings. But we're going to go ahead and set up with a mask and then it's going to ask us to position ourselves in the frame one more time. And then we'll just slowly move our head around in a circle just like this. And then it registers a second face scan. So now it says remove your glasses for the third face scan. So I'll take my glasses off just like this and then we'll hit continue and do a third scan. And all you have to do again is just position your face in the frame and it asks us to move closer a little bit. So I'll move closer and then I'll move around just like this. And 
in a circle, move my head around, and just like that, I have enrolled Face ID with the mask. Face ID is now set up, and we have successfully set up Face ID. So we can add different pairs of glasses, and we can add additional faces in the settings. So I'll go ahead and hit the blue continue, the blue continue button right here at the very bottom, just like this. And now it asks us to create a passcode. So this is highly important to keep your data secure. You'll go ahead and create a passcode. You've got different passcode options. If you want to do a four digit numeric code, a custom numeric code, or a custom alpha numeric code. So these options right here, four digits, just pick four numbers. Custom numeric code is a longer number code, more than four or six digits. And then a custom alpha numeric code, you can use text or numbers in the same uh, string of passcodes. So all you have to do is just select whichever method you want. The longer your password is, the more difficult it is to guess, the you know more secure it is. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my passcode off camera, and I'll just quickly type it in right here. And then it's going to ask you to re-enter your passcode after you've typed it in for the first time. So I'll move it off camera. I'll retype in my passcode just like this. And now it will successfully create a passcode on the iPhone. The next stage here is to transfer your apps and your data. So if you have an iCloud backup or if you have another iPhone or a Mac or PC or an Android device, you can transfer your data seamlessly just by selecting whichever option. So if you have an iPhone, you probably have an iPhone backup in your cloud. You can just tap that, sign in with your iCloud information and seamlessly transfer your data to your brand new phone. If you have another iPhone, you can plug them up and go back to Quick Start or you can put them nearby each other and easily transfer your data that way. And that takes us back to the very beginning. So we're going to go ahead and skip through, set up at another device later and set up for myself. And now we're back at the transfer your apps and data screen. So you can do it from a Mac or PC or Android, or if you want to set this up as a brand new iPhone, you can press this don't transfer anything button. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to start fresh on this brand new iPhone. We'll go ahead and press don't transfer anything. And next up, it asks us to set up an Apple ID. So here you can sign in with your Apple ID in order to have the App Store and Apple services or iCloud. There's also an option at the very bottom right here. You've got two options. You can say forgot password if you forgot your password or if you don't have an Apple ID. You can create one right here in the settings, create a free Apple ID, or you can set up later in settings. If you don't want to set up an Apple ID right now, it shows you what you can get with an Apple ID. So you can get all of your content in iCloud. You can find the best apps in the App Store. You can shop for music, movies, TVs, and all the great content in the iTunes Store. You can access photos on all your devices with iCloud Photos. You can send unlimited text messages to other iPhones with iMessage. You can make video calls using FaceTime, and you can shop with your favorite books and sync bookmarks and notes across your devices. So you get a lot of stuff with your Apple ID that you can sign in. And again, you can create a free Apple ID with this button right here, or you can set up later in settings, or if you forgot your password or Apple ID, you can tap that. I'm gonna tap the back button. I'm gonna go over this feature right here. The very bottom, there is a use multiple accounts button. You can select this and sign in with the account that you use for iCloud or the account that you use for iTunes or the account that you use for a different service here. You have more than one accounts. Sometimes you share one with a family member, whether you're using one for iTunes purchases, you can sign in with that different account for iCloud and that different account um, for iTunes. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit the back button. This is the main sign in screen that you'll probably use whether you wanna get started with the App Store or another Apple service or just sign into iCloud. All you have to do is just tap on this screen right here in the section that says email or phone number, and then you just type in your email or phone number. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my email. We can do this, so I'll type in my email for my Apple ID. And just like this, um, once I have this typed in, I'll be able to go to the next section here. And the next section is the password. So you type in your email for your Apple ID or your phone number, and then you type in your password. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my password off camera and make sure that um, it's secure and not visible. And then I'm gonna hit the continue button and it's gonna ask for an Apple ID code. So this is the two-step verification. Now, since I do have another device that's logged into this Apple ID, it's gonna ask me to verify it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that Apple ID. I'm gonna set this down. And what this allows you to do is stay secure. I'm gonna go across the room here and select my Apple ID 
iPhone that's logged in here. And what happens is you get a section right here that says Apple ID sign in requested. Your Apple ID is being used to sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this phone and then I'm gonna tap on that notification and it's gonna show um, a option right here, sign in requested, and then I can hit allow or don't allow. I'm gonna go ahead and hit allow and then it's gonna give me a code here. So I'll go ahead and type in this code right here on the Apple ID verification. This will allow me to log in successfully on the new device. So you type in the code and just like this, it's signing me in. So we've got some new terms and conditions. Now that we're successfully signed in, I'll go ahead and hit agree or you can disagree to them. You know, you can review them and uh, make your decision there but you'll need to agree in order to use these successfully. And we get this brand new animation here, messages, the find my app. And it has my Memoji robot there. It's got all of the different services that it's signing us into. This is a beautiful animation. It does take a few minutes here as it signs us in and downloads all of my stuff from iCloud and the um, you know Apple ID that I logged in signing, me in, signing me in here on a fresh iPhone. So this is really neat. Um, and it goes in a circle here and you can see all of the iCloud apps and all the services here. And now we're on a new screen where it says, make this your new iPhone. So here's everything you need on and how I set it up on my old iPhone here. So I am setting this up as a new iPhone. So under apps and data, it says don't transfer anything. And then next up are settings. I can come into settings. I can see how I had my settings set up. I've got Siri, Siri was on. Screen time is off, app analytics is on, iPhone analytics is on, location services is on, and light or dark display is set for dark. I can hit customize if I want. I can double check the wallet, see what other um, services I have there. It shows my credit card information. And I can go ahead and hit continue once I am good to go here. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And just like this, it will allow me to move forward in the process. So it'll think, it'll save all these settings that we have. It automatically set it as dark mode, as you can see now. Um, so that was really neat to see. It went from light mode to dark mode. It remembered that from my settings that we just reviewed here. And then the loading process is downloading all these settings. It's not transferring any data. So this should be fairly quick. If you are transferring data, this may take a few minutes. You may need to set your phone down, wait 30 minutes, maybe an hour, however long it takes to move all of your data from your old iPhone to your new iPhone. Sometimes that can be a long time if you're restoring from a backup. Um, you know, it may take a few minutes there. And then you can see here, it's taking a few minutes to download all of the previous settings that I had attached to my Apple ID. And then when all of these settings are done, you'll be able to move and unlock your iPhone and use it um, as you know normal. And this is a really exciting time because you're able to set up your brand new iPhone. So next up is an option to set up cellular. You can transfer a number from a nearby iPhone or scan the QR code provided by your carrier. So if you have an eSIM, you can go ahead and set that up using the QR code. Or if you have an older iPhone with an eSIM in it, you can transfer wirelessly just by selecting transfer from new iPhone. And you have to make sure that um, you know, you're transferring from another iPhone, it's nearby, it's unlocked, has Bluetooth turned on, and it's running iOS 16 or later. And if you use a QR code, you just scan that QR code for the carrier and it automatically enables that eSIM on this iPhone. We're gonna go ahead and set up later in settings. If you don't have cellular service, there's no need to worry. You can use Wi-Fi. And we'll go ahead and hit the bottom option right here that says set up later in settings. And now it asks us to confirm. Skip eSIM setup. You can set up your eSIM later in cellular settings. This iPhone will not be able to make calls or connect to the internet with the cellular data until your eSIM is set up. So just to be aware, you will need Wi-Fi in order to use your iPhone for the internet connection without an eSIM, which is your cellular service. And the iPhone is only available with an eSIM, which is an electronic SIM card that's you know input it already soldered onto the motherboard of the iPhone. You no longer insert a chip into the phone. And on this model of the iPhone, you need an eSIM in order for it to work. So we're gonna go ahead and skip this process and we won't have cellular data on this phone until we set up this later. 
Next up, you can improve Siri in dictation. You have the option to share audio recordings with Siri, or you have the option to say no. Keep in mind this very bottom section, this data is not associated with your Apple ID and is only stored for a limited period of time. So people reviewing these recordings will not know that it's coming from you. So if you want to share them, you can. If you do not want to share your recordings to improve Siri in dictation, then you choose not now. I'll go ahead and hit share recordings for now. Next up is silent mode. This is a brand new switch here in the control center. You can toggle silent mode on or off and check its status in the control center. You can access control center by swiping down right here at the top once we unlock the phone and I'll show you exactly how to do that and how to access the new silent mode on your iPhone. We'll go ahead and hit the continue button just right here. And next up is the action button. The action button is right here at the top. I'll go ahead and get that in light. So this button right here, it used to be a silent switch where you could physically move it down and up, but now it's a single, single button and it's called the action button. And it allows us to do really great stuff. We'll go over this later. We'll go ahead and we can actually customize it right now. So you can press and hold to turn the silent mode on and off. So if I hold it, you can see it goes into silent mode. If I hold it again, it brings it out of silent mode. But you can customize this button and the action button can open camera, turn on flashlight or access a different iPhone feature that's your favorite. We can go ahead and hit customize at the bottom right here, this big blue button, and we can see all of the options available for the brand new action button on the iPhone 15 Pro. And this is incredible because the silent mode switch here, it doesn't have to be a silent switch. You can swipe, you can switch between the action button features here. We can swipe over and we can see all the various different features. So at the very end, there is no action. If you press the button, it will do absolutely nothing. We can swipe over one more and you can choose an accessibility feature to turn on with uh, the action button. We can just click choose button or choose feature right here and you can see all of the uh, great accessibility features right here. One of my favorite features that we have with accessibility is live speech. I'll go ahead and tap that. And now when I hold down on the button, live speech will come up. So we can move over to another option here, shortcut open app or run your shortcuts. We'll go over this in uh, great detail where you can choose a shortcut on your phone and allow your phone to do almost anything. Um, we can say music recognition, we can access different books, clocks, code scanner. We can have a ton of different options. There are thousands of possibilities to happen right here with the shortcuts option. Next up is the magnifier. You can turn your iPhone into a magnifying glass. We got voice memo. This is a favorite. You can, when your action button is set to the voice memo, you can hold it down and it will immediately start recording a voice memo on your iPhone. Quick access, perfect for getting quick notes or recording you know, uh, on your iPhone with the voice memos. Another favorite is the flashlight. You can set your action button to immediately turn on the flashlight when you hold it down. And then you've got the camera app. If you take a lot of photos or videos, you can open the camera app and capture a moment with the action button. You just set it as your camera and move forward there. You have the focus option where you can turn on a focus mode. If you hold down the action button, it will set up a focus mode on your iPhone. And then we've got the original option as the silent mode. Just by holding it down, it will turn off or on silent mode. So those are the features there for your action button and they're highly customizable. And you can come in here and select whichever one you want and you know make this action button your very own action button. So for now, I'm gonna keep this as a silent mode switch and be sure to check out all of our content on the action button. We're gonna be doing a complete beginner's guide on the action button and you can check it out right here on that fine channel. So be sure to subscribe to that. Next up, we'll go ahead and hit continue and we'll move on to the next feature. The next feature is emergency SOS and you've got the iPhone options here. You can press and hold for emergency SOS. All you have to do is press and hold the side button and either the volume button and to make an emergency call. So it can be the volume button up or it can be the volume button down. Just press one of the other. So we can do volume button up and the power button here, the side button to make an emergency call. It's got crash detection. So if it detects a severe car crash, it'll automatically call emergency services. And then in select countries, we've got emergency SOS via satellite. And when available, you can 
contact them with text emergency services through satellite, even if cellular connection is not available. So really handy feature. So those are the emergency SOS options you've got in this brand new iPhone. And we can go ahead and hit continue to move on. We get a welcome to iPhone screen. We've successfully set up our iPhone. And now we're presented with our home screen on the iPhone. It's incredible. We've got all of our various different applications here. And we're going to go through all the features on this brand new iPhone that you can check out and get started. One of my favorite that we just set up is the action button. All we have to do is just press this button on the side and silent mode will be turned on. So just like that, you do have to hold it down. If you tap it, it will not um, you know, automatically do it. You do have to hold it down for a few seconds in order for it to process there. So really cool feature there that we've got baked in and I'm really excited about this one. During the setup process, we skipped the update. I wanna show you how to update your phone to the latest software. In order to do that on this iPhone, you head over to the settings button, which is at the very bottom on the right here. You tap on that and you scroll down to general. After you've tapped on general, at the very top, there's an option right here that says software update. You tap on that and it downloads the latest iPhone software update. All you have to do is just hit the update now button, authorize with your passcode. I'll type in my passcode off camera and then it begins to download and install that software update. So you can see right here that the update is requested and after a little while, it'll start, it'll show a download progress bar and then you'll be able to install the latest software successfully. We can see that it takes about three minutes to install or to download onto our phone right here and it'll have important bug fixes, security updates and more. So really fun stuff right here inside the software update settings screen on our brand new iPhone. After your update is finished downloading, it'll move on to the next stage where it says preparing to update. And you'll see it just like here with the loading bar and preparing to update. After the preparing update stage, your iPhone will restart and you'll get this Apple logo and a progress bar right here as your update continues. So don't be alarmed if it goes black and an Apple logo appears. This is just the update process. It may restart a few times and then it'll boot right back up to your normal lock screen where you can type in your passcode and unlock with the latest software installed on your iPhone. After your phone has been successfully updated, you'll be presented with the lock screen and this lovely message where it says software update. Your iPhone has been updated to iOS. So just like that, we've updated our iPhone and now we can swipe to unlock. I'm going to go ahead and type in my passcode off camera and I'm presented with my lock screen right here. So that's how you update your iPhone to the latest software. And after you've done that, you're good to go. You've got all the bug fixes, all the latest security updates, and your phone is ready to be used. So you can go ahead and use your phone fully. So let's check out some of the features on the iPhone. One of my favorite features is standby. This looks incredible when you use a two-in-one L gear charger. You can charge your AirPods in the back and attach your iPhone and magnetically charge it just like this and enter the brand new standby mode. You can get a two-in-one L gear charger using the link in the description and get 15% off using the code AppFine and enter this brand new standby mode on your brand new iPhone. It looks incredible. You can scroll through the widgets here just like this. You can see various different widgets. You've got stock, you've got a clock, you've got other clock faces. You can swipe on the right and see you've got the calendar, we've got the weather, We've got our events calendar and reminders. We can swipe over to the right and see more things like our photos. You can unlock using Face ID and type in your passcode to see photos. And then we can swipe over and see different clock faces. So it's really impressive because they've got tons of different options. And this looks stunning as a nightstand or on your desk when you attach it to a 2-in-1 L gear charger and you use MagSafe and you Get her, you enter standby mode and you have options to view all the different widgets and the clock faces right here just by swiping over. So it's a beautiful interface and really neat and you've got to check it out on your device. It's incredible. Don't forget to use the link in the description to get your 2-in-1 L gear charger where you can use standby mode. Another cool interface here that we have in standby mode is the settings. I'm going to show you exactly how to get this. All you have to do is just open up the settings here right here. You tap on the settings icon and you scroll down and you find standby. 
and we tap on standby and you have all the various settings in standby. You can turn off standby, you can have the always on display, the night mode. Night mode is interesting. When it detects the lights have been turned off, a red tint shows up with low ambient lighting. It's really impressive and it's really nice. It doesn't, you know, um, light up the room as much when it has different colors. So really cool. And then it uses motion to wake. So if you walk up or you, you wave your hand, it wakes up the display and it shows you your, your widgets. You've got notifications. Notifications pop up when standby is enabled. So you can see if you get a notification, you can tap on it to view more details. You can turn that off and on. So they've got tons of different settings right here baked in the settings app for the standby mode. It is an incredible opportunity to see great information on your device. And I highly recommend it that you try it out when you get your iPhone. So really cool. One of my favorite features of the iPhone. Let's talk about widgets. At the top left, we've got a weather widget, and in the top right, we've got a calendar widget. You can tap on whatever widget you want and see all of the details inside of the app. You can also tap on the calendar widget over here and see all the details. But you may be wondering, how do you add a widget to your home screen? All you have to do is just hold down on an icon and wait for it to enter wiggle mode there. You just hold down for a few seconds and everything starts to wiggle. And at the very top here, you've got a plus button. You can tap that plus button and here is where you access all of your widgets. So you can scroll down and find whichever widgets that are compatible on your phone. You can also use the search box at the very top. We can type in a widget. We can say reminders. We can scroll over. They've got various different types of widgets, like a square widget, a rectangle widget, a larger widget, and we can select whichever one that we want. Let's select this rectangle one, and then we just press the add widget button right here, and it adds it onto our phone just like that. Now, you may be wondering, there are no reminders. How do we modify that? All you have to do is just tap on it and you can select which wrist of reminders that you want to work. So we can go over to groceries and then things like groceries pop up. So then you hit done. And one thing that's really neat about widgets is that you have an interactive widget on the brand new software and iPhone. So if you wanna tap away, you can do that. You can check off, I can say I've got my Fruit Loops and I can tap it off just like that. And I don't ever have to open up the app. I can just use the widget. I can tap on it straight from the widget and it opens and creates the um, you know automation just like that. You just tap on it and it immediately checks it off on my list. So it's really cool that you can interact with widgets in iOS 17 and on the new phone. And it's really incredible that all you have to do is just tap on whatever widget. So sometimes the widget opens up the app and then other times it allows you to interact with it without opening the app. So it's super cool. If we wanna open the app, we can tap on it just like this. We can add things to our groceries list or more. And then of course we can check out what other options we have inside the reminders app. So really cool that you can use interactive widgets. We can come over, we can select and hold on this widget too. We can edit the home screen by pressing this edit home screen button. Everything enters wiggle mode again. And we can go over here and hit the plus button and add another widget to our screen. So we can go over here and select the stocks widget. And then you've got different sizes. You can select, we'll select the smaller size here. And now we've got the stock widget for our iPhone right here on our screen. So really cool. All you have to do is just tap on it and it welcomes us to stocks. So super cool that we have all of these options right here to access widgets on our iPhone. And you can add as many widgets as you want across your home screen and have it fully personalized to you. All you have to do is just enter wiggle mode. You just select and hold until everything jiggles. You hit the plus button and you can add whichever uh, widget you want to your screen. And of, course, and of course, other apps have access to widgets too if developers make them and you can add them to your home screen. So really fun to play with, really fun to customize your home screen. And you can do that right here on your iPhone with widgets. Next up is messages and stickers. You can tap on this green icon right here with the chat bubble to access all of your messages. And inside of this thread here, you can do all kinds of things with your messages. They've got various different settings. At the top, they've got an edit button. You can tap on the edit button and edit pins or select messages. And in the top right, you can make a new message and address who you want to send it to, any one of your contacts, or you can type in a phone number or email address. Here we've got a message thread. If I want to pin this, all I have to do is just hold down on it. And there's an option at the very bottom right here to pin this to the top. And I can press the pin button and it pins this message thread at the top. And I'll always be able to message this person just by tapping on their pin at the very top. I can hold it again and unpin it. 
and then it unpins it and it just becomes a normal message in the Messages app. We can swipe to the left here and tap this blue button and mark it as unread just like that and now can respond to it later. You tap on it and the blue dot disappears now because you've read it. And all you have to do to get that blue dot back to mark it as unread is just swipe over and tap on the blue chat bubble right there and the blue dot comes right back and it's marked as unread. So you've got tons of options here. You can tap and hold, you can delete this or you can hide alerts. If you hide alerts, then you will not receive any uh, notifications when this person messages you. And then you can hit the delete button to remove the conversation thread from your phone. So just like that, you can tap on it and then you can start typing your message. Over here, they've got a plus option where you can access all of the various different iMessage apps. So they've got camera, photos, stickers, Apple Cache, audio, location. You can tap this more option and all of your various different apps that you've downloaded and other apps appear like the App Store, images, check-in, digital touch, emoji, music. So you've got various different applications that you can use right here inside the Messages app. And today I'm gonna to tap the plus button and show you how to use the Stickers app. Because the Stickers app is very fun and you can come in here and create custom stickers. So you can tap on this first icon right here, the sticker that's peeling, and then you can add in custom stickers. You can see I've already added a few. I can press this plus button and it brings up my photo library and I can come over here and select any photo. Let's select one of these art photos that I created with the AI. You just tap on it and then um, we can come in here, it analyzes it and creates a uh, you know outline of my face and it captures that for the sticker. And I press this add sticker button and just like this, I've added a brand new sticker to my iMessage stickers app. I can come over here, I can press the rearrange button, I can add an effect or I can delete it. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tap on it and then it's going to insert itself into the thread here where I can type a comment or send it. And I can just press the send button just like that and I've sent a brand new sticker. And just like that, I've used stickers, the iMessage app inside of my iPhone. So another cool thing that you can come in is you have live stickers, live photos. So if you've taken a photo that has a bit of motion in it on your iPhone, you can see, for example, this corn that I've taken a photo of. I move my camera a little bit. I created a live photo sticker. So it animates itself. I can send that just like that. So it's a really cool thing that you can do here in this new software and on your new phone. And you can even adjust the size of everything. All you have to do is just click and hold and drag and then pinch. And now I can change the size of my image here. And now I can have it very large. I can drag it into the thread just like that. So stickers inside of the iMessage app on your brand new iPhone and the brand new software is incredible and it's very fun to play with. You can add custom stickers, photos from your photo library, and then also, of course, stickers from other apps like, you know, your fitness app or any third party apps. All the stickers will appear. You can use emoji. You've got various different options here to check out inside of your iPhone in the stickers app. So it's really cool. All you have to do is just load up a message thread, hit the plus button, find the stickers app, tap that, and then it loads up. We can even drag this to the top and see all of our stickers all on one page and scroll down as we need and then tap whichever sticker we want and then it immediately puts it in the frame and we can hit the send button just like that. So this is iMessage stickers and it's very fun to play with and I can't wait to see all the stickers that we create over the next few years as we interact with everyone on iMessage um, because this is by far one of the coolest features that you can check out right now. Let's check out the FaceTime app on our brand new iPhone. You just open up the FaceTime icon right there. We can scroll in and look at that one more time. It's the green icon with the video um, icon. It's the green icon, green background icon with the video icon. You just tap on it once and it opens up FaceTime. So here, one of my favorite features in FaceTime now is the option to leave video voicemails. So you can leave a video message if someone does not answer on your FaceTime call and it's very neat. We can demo it really quick. All we have to do is just call someone and you can see I'm right here, camera's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and decline the call. And now you have an option right here where it says call again, close or record video because this person declined the call or if it you know, timed out, this will appear. And now you can hit the record video button. So we'll do that and it will count down from five, three, two, one. 
now I'm recording a FaceTime video message and I can go ahead and leave my message. The person wasn't available and when they have a chance, they can review this video on their phone under the FaceTime app and it's really neat and really cool. So you can see the timer on the top, it's counting up the seconds as I record and then I can manually stop it at the very bottom with this stop X or stop square button, the red square. We'll stop it and just like this, it allows me to replay the video, I can tap on it and it plays the video here. I can tap on a deposit, I can skim around, make sure that this is the perfect video message to leave inside of FaceTime, and then I can go ahead and just press this green arrow upwards right here on the white background, I can just tap it, or if I want to, I can retake the video, refilm it, make it as perfect as I want. I can also save it locally on my phone right here at the very top right, I can tap save, but I'm just gonna go ahead and send this off. And just like that, I sent a video message over FaceTime because the call, you know, went to voicemail. It wasn't available. It was unavailable to, uh, you know, take place. And then it gave me the option to leave a video voicemail. And I can always see what that looks like. I can just press the play button right here to see what a uh, voicemail looks like. We can check out from earlier this year and I can skim through it. I can save that voicemail. So really cool way to interact on FaceTime now. If you call someone, you can leave them a video message and they can watch it when they get a chance, then FaceTime you back later. And then of course, if you wanna FaceTime someone, you just press the new FaceTime button. You can type in their phone number, their email, or you can tap on their contacts here and then it inserts their name and then we can FaceTime them just like this. And it rings. I'm gonna go ahead and look at our options here. I'm gonna mute this and then we can see that we've got the speaker option right here. We've got the camera option. We can turn the camera off. We can turn, uh, we can change the speaker options. We can mute, we can share our screen or we can end it. I'm gonna go ahead and end it so it stops ringing. So we've got various different options when we FaceTime with people and it makes it very fun because you can do all those options when you interact with people. So this is FaceTime, I can come over here, I can press the edit button and I can adjust my name, my photo and all the information there. And I can also FaceTime with anyone by creating a link. Even if they don't have an iPhone or an Apple device, I can just create a link here and then send this off to anyone and they can hop using, they can hop on the FaceTime call using their web browser and it makes it very fun to come in here and interact with. So this is FaceTime and it's very fun. I love FaceTiming all my friends and interacting with them. And of course you have all the cool features like video voicemail now built right into FaceTime. So very cool feature. You can definitely check it out on your iPhone and your Apple device right now. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to download an app on your iPhone. I wanna swipe over and find the App Store. Now there are multiple ways to find apps on your iPhone. The first way is to visually slide and scroll until you find it. So if you swipe across your iPhone, eventually you can find the app. The second way is to hit the search icon at the very bottom. All you have to do is just tap it and then you can type in whatever app you're looking for. I'm looking for the App Store, so I type in App Store and it pops up under Top Hits. The next way, if you're on your home screen and you wanna find an app, you can also access the search by just swiping down. So you just select a piece of the home screen and you swipe down and the same search box pops open. And then the last way you can find this is by on your home screen, swiping all the way to the very end until you get access to the app library. And here you can find all the apps installed on your app, on your iPhone, even if they're not on your home screen. So if I don't want this app, like pages on my home screen, I can hold down and I can tap this minus button right here, and then I can remove the app from the home screen. Now that does not delete pages from my iPhone. It only removes it from the home screen. If I swipe over to the app library, which is at the very end, I still have access to pages right here at the very top, or I can type the search pages right here, right here, and access pages. If I wanna bring it back to my home screen, all I have to do is just drag it right back to my home screen. So that's how you navigate things on your iPhone to home screen, and you can find any app by swiping all the way over to the app library. So we wanna install an application on our iPhone, and we do that by accessing the App Store. So I can see the App Store right here. If it wasn't there, I can tap the top, it's organized alphabetically, and at the top here, we've got the App Store. You can also type in App Store, and it will show up. So App Store is right there. We tap on it, and we have access to the App Store on our iPhone. And now you can find any app that you want. And of course, if it's on the home screen or the Today page, you can download. I'm going to go ahead and use the search bar and find the Timu app. And I'll type in Timu just like that. 
You can download Zamu using the link in the description and get up to $100 with coupons for free and 50% off. All you have to do is just click the link in the description and get access to all of that. We can go ahead, tap on this app, and then press the blue Get button to install it, and it will start to authorize with Face ID. So you'll need to double click to install your side button right here. So you'll need to be looking at the phone and then double tap the side button, and it will authorize with Face ID, and then download the app. So just like that, we're installing Timu, and again, you can use the link in the description to get up to $100 off coupons for free and 50% off, and then you can go ahead and download and open up the Timu app just like this and have access to all of the deals. So very fun app right here. You can shop and do all of your favorite shopping right here, and that's how you download an app on the iPhone. All you have to do is just find the App Store, so you just swipe over to App Store and you can type in, you can search whatever app you want. You can press the Get button and then open the app just like that. So after it's installed, an open button appears and you can come in here, use the app, and it makes it really easy to install any of the various apps that you want to on your iPhone. So that's how you install an app on your iPhone and you can open up the App Store and download whatever app you'd like and it's really easy to get started. Next up, I'm going to show you how to use AirDrop and NameDrop. These are some great new features on your iPhones. And in order to use NameDrop, that's a feature where you can exchange contact information by touching the top of the iPhones together. So we've got two iPhones here. You need to have your iPhone unlocked and on the home screen. So once that's there, you can slide both of the phones together just like this. And the name drop interface, this animation, it's beautiful. It'll appear just like this. So a brand new screen pops up right here. Receive contact information. To share your contact information, set up my card and contact settings. So you can say not now or receive only. So I'm gonna go ahead and say receive only just like this and then I can receive the contact information. But in order to set up your contact card, all you have to do is go over to your phone app. So I'm gonna open up phone. And then inside of the phone application, we open that up, there's a contacts section right here. We can tap on contacts, and at the top is the app find contact card. So you can tap on that, and you can add in all of your information, like your phone number, your email, everything you need. You can update your profile photo. You can see the robot emoji there. So after you've added in a phone number, when you tap away to anyone's iPhone, it will automatically pop open uh, the contact card and you can send them with that beautiful animation. So we'll try that one more time. We actually have to be on the home screen. So I'm gonna swipe up, go to the home screen and the phones have to be unlocked and on the home screen. And just like that, you get a beautiful animation where you can share your contact card and you see the other person's contact card, their emoji, their photo, and it has the option to share the phone number. And I'm gonna cover up my phone number here and show you. So at the very bottom right here, you've got the option to receive or share. And if I hit share, it'll immediately airdrop this phone number right over to the other phone. So it makes it really cool. You don't ever have to um, you know, message anyone or type any digits. All you have to do is just tap on the top of the phone while you're on the home screen and unlocked, and it will automatically share all your contact information just like that. So a very fun way to interact with AirDrop, and that's called NameDrop. NameDrop is what transfers all of your contact information seamlessly with, by touching the top of your phones. Very cool on the iPhone. Another way to use AirDrop is to send photos or media. So if we open up the photo library and we hit continue here, and then we can select a photo here. Let's go over to all photos. And now I'll select another AI photo. We can select Let's do this one right here. If I want to share this, I can press the share button and go to airdrop and then find someone nearby to automatically airdrop this to. And just like this, it uses airdrop and instantly sends this photo to the other phone. And you can see you've got the option to accept it, decline it or not. So we'll go ahead and decline since it already submitted it. And just like that, we used airdrop to transfer a photo. So you can transfer any file and then tap the top of anyone's phone and it will initiate that transfer process. So really cool options that we have there on our devices. You can use airdrop to transfer files or videos or any type of data there, and then also use it to transfer phone numbers. Numbers. So a very new way to interact with uh, AirDrop on your device. Next up is AirPlay. If you have something like Apple Music, you can tap on the music icon and then select a song. We can come over here to library and go to songs. 
and then select the song. I'm gonna mute this because we do not want to play this, but we'll go ahead and open it up. And now you have the option to airplay this to a different speaker or with Bluetooth headphones or you know a, a Bluetooth connection. At the very bottom here is the airplay button. And this is how you access the menu option. So you just tap that once and you see every wireless speaker that you've got connected to your Wi-Fi, and you can see all of your Bluetooth devices that you turn on. So all you do is, you know, connect your Bluetooth device or you scroll down and you tap one of your wirelessly connected speakers and it will automatically start playing this on that speaker. So you can access all of your airplay settings for Bluetooth speakers and TVs by finding the airplay icon, which which is universal and looks just like this with an arrow and some circles around it. You just tap on that and it instantly pulls up everything you need to know with AirPlay. And you can tap on your Bluetooth speaker or you can tap on um, you know, a Wi-Fi connected speaker in your house or another TV. So really neat, really fun to come in here and access AirPlay. And this is system wide. So whether you're watching a, a video on another app or a, um, you know, a song, on any app, you can just wirelessly send that video or song or media to any TV or speaker just by tapping on the AirPlay button at the very bottom. So very fun to interact with. To see the best AI tools and apps, go to appfind.ai for a full list of hundreds of tools. Also, subscribe to our weekly newsletter using the link in the description at appfind.ai slash newsletter to get a weekly email update of the best AI tools in your inbox. And make sure to sign up for other recommended newsletters as well. That way, you can always stay up to date with the latest AI tools in tech. This has been a complete beginner's guide of the iPhone, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button and let us know what your favorite feature is in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because we love producing technology content like this and have a lot planned for you in the future. So thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next one.